Hi, I'm Jessica Davey. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer and Creative Excellence Director for McCann World Group in Asia Pacific, and I will be your host. Hi, I'm Shane Millington. Um, I'm the Global Executive Creative Director for Microsoft. Hello. Hello, everybody. I am Raquel Martinez, Rachel, for, for my friends, and I am an Executive Creative Director from McCann, Spain. Hey everyone, I'm Maan Bautista and I'm a creative director from Macan World Group Philippines. Great. So as you can see, we have a global panel of, of wonderful women here today to talk about a really important topic for us, which is uh, gender equality and specifically gender equality and the post COVID-19 world. Um, so as we go into the conversation, I'm going to just set it up with a few slides that talk about where we are at the moment in the world of gender equality. Okay, so we're talking about gender equality and its role in a post-COVID-19 world. Um, as an industry, we have spent a lot of time, particularly in the last decade, focusing on gender equality and representation. But when we think that we've kind of got to the point where this discussion is, has been maxed out, it's important to understand that actually, when it comes to representation of women, in most of the major industries in the world, we are still not at gender parity. It took us 124 years for the Olympics to have close to 50% representation. In global parliaments, we're only at 25% representation. Less than 0.05% of Nobel Prize winners are women. And in fact, only one woman in the history of the Academy Awards has ever won Best Director. But not just gender equality as a general issue, we've seen in the last few months that certain topics and themes have really risen to the surface due to the impact of COVID-19 and our new normal. So when you look at the shocking rise in domestic violence, uh, we've actually been doing campaigns around this with MRM in London but you can look at the fact that the UK's largest domestic abuse charity refuge has reported a 700% increase in calls due to the fact that people are now staying at home and they're trapped in domestic violence situations. When you look at the huge toll that the frontline healthcare workers are undertaking every day in hospitals around the world, the fact that women make up 78% of healthcare workers globally is incredibly important. And then when you look at the fact that in our new normal, where so many countries have had schools closed down, the fact that women make up 67% of primary school teachers globally, again, has seen a huge conversation around the role of gender equality, not just across these particular industries, but just in general. So today for our panel, we're going to be focusing on two key questions. The first is going to be, what makes great gender equality work? And will that change post COVID-19? And if so, how? So let's start with that question. Shane, what makes great gender equality work for you? So I think for me, um, the way I've always looked at great gender equality work is the fact that it's never, um, it's never gone out as, it, you don't start you don't start there. Um, one of the pieces that we've been working on with uh, Microsoft is taking something and just looking at a brief um, and being inclusive in that brief. So the fact of, of having gender equality work is starting at the brief. It's starting at the creative crux of the assignment. It's not saying, okay, now we're going to have a piece of work that has equality in it. All work should have equality in it. So when you're doing assignments, it's not that you you separate them. That already is creating non-diverse, non-equality uh, work. But putting um, more interesting people and having the cast be a little bit more diverse and, and showing um, women uh, in areas that they don't generally um, are shown. And for example, we did an assignment for NFL um, it, uh, this year. And generally, we would have hired, you know, uh, football players or football coaches. But rather than that, we thought, well, why not put a woman in this role? 
So those are those types of decisions that help create a better gender equality. Um, I also think having a diverse, it also starts with the people reviewing the work. So if you don't have good gender equality in your, um, in your meetings, guess who's going to be reviewing the work? All men or, you know, all men and maybe one woman. So that one female's voice is going to have to be very strong to uh, say, actually, I think that's a little sexist or actually that doesn't really hit the right tone for me. So you have to have it on both ends, the thinking and the reviewing. Um, so that's, that's what I think uh, makes gender equality work really great. When you, know, you have a diverse group coming up with it, but you also have a diverse group reviewing it. Raquel, how are you feeling over there? Yeah, I, I quite agree with, with, with Shane. So one of, I think one of the best ways to do a good work in favor of gender equality is uh, through ideas that inspire people and especially new generation with, with this kind of messages that focus on remembering that whatever they dream for, no matter what, what they feel maybe is science or sport or business, whatever, whatever are, are dreaming for is possible. This kind of message like Serena no, with Nike or uh, Microsoft with the, the American football coach or, or Fairless Girl, right? This is this kind of an example. That, and I think this kind of ideas really breaks, produce, no? leads to real change either in, in, in people's behavior or, or change important facts in, in the brands itself that, that launches the matches. No? It's amazing what uh, Gillette uh, think about the, the slogan that they, they had a long uh, time ago, right? Like the, the best for the men. Well, who is the best for the men? This is not only a talk about women and men, you know, it's try to, to put the, these ideas to work and try to 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 inspire to inspire the society in general. That I think this is the the best the best work that we can do. You're right. If we don't inspire, if we don't inspire, it's like then then what's the point? You know. You're right. Yeah, exactly. So, man, how does that play out in the Philippines? Well, I think there's a certain kind of bravery uh, that it takes. You know, when when doing great gender equality work. I think that's always fundamental in any piece of work, uh, that it has to be anchored in a, you know, in a strong truth. And ideally, it's something that women truly believe so. Uh, for me, the best pieces of work are sort of anchored on an uncomfortable or overlooked truth, but there's a certain bravery you know, in tackling them and or even you know, creating an awareness for that topic. I mean, I, I guess it's the reason why spots like like a girl resonated so much here in the Philippines, or I mean, Nike's recent spots are you know very spot on. Dove's real beauty, but for me also more importantly, advertising that does something uh, that prompts people into action is ultimately powerful. You know, you don't just talk the talk, but walk a walk, and you know, do your part in making that change and trying to push for that balance. Yeah, and I think it's. When we look at what's happening with COVID, I think we're seeing a bigger push towards that kind of work for brands now, right? Don't yeah. just tell me something, yeah. do something. And do you think that's going to have an impact in the work that comes out post COVID? Oh, definitely. I think, you know, because during this time, I think the brands that actually help people, help women in their current situation are the brands that will really start that change. I mean, we've all heard the talk before, but now at the time where it, th these are trying times. So I think brands that ultimately help in the cause will be remembered and, you know, will do something that will push for that balance that we all, we are all looking for. What do you think, Shane? Do you think there's going to be a change in how we talk about gender issues post-COVID? Uh, I do. I mean, I think, you know, it's always evolving. So whether this is the new normal, so it's always going to evolve. I think that, you know, um, what happened recently, um, I, think, I, I think a lot of changes are going to happen. Yeah. I think you're going to see a lot more flexibility in work. Um, I think that that is one thing that has driven, I would say, at least 
for my own personal friends have driven a lot of women out of advertising because there isn't the flexibility. So if you want to have a family and you want to try and do it all, the flexibility wasn't there. So having that flexibility and having, you know, things like Microsoft Teams um, where you can work from home. And I know that we've talked about, you know, ha having that be part of the future of, you know, World Group or IPG. So I feel as though that's going to then include more women, more women that want to have yeah. families, more dads that want to have families, you know. So already having a more inclusive working environment already includes more people in it. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. You know, like that's one. Um, I also think what happened recently, which was very interesting, was uh, you started to see in the trades that advertising was being quote unquote COVID advertising. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So it all people did mashups with all piano music and did all <laughs> the same. And it was, and what it did was showed you you have to be different. Part of being different is taking on different issues, looking at it from a different way, you know? Um, and so I feel as though, will it have to do with gender equality? Maybe, but I think brands are realizing that they can't just do the same as everyone else. They just wind up feeling all vanilla. Even if you are advertising, you need to stand out. And part of that is, um, creating work that feels different and highlighting possibly different issues, but mm. not following in everyone else's footsteps. Absolutely. Yeah. Raquel, what do you think? What do you, where do you see the changes in gender uh, equality? Uh, something that my husband uh, shared with me and it was amazing. Fab, I don't know if you, you, you have this, this is COVID-19 mortality rate in select uh, location and the difference between the countries where female is leaders and with male leaders. I don't know if you, this is, is this a, a very, <laughs> have you seen? Mm -hmm. It's quite curious, yes. you know? Yeah. Five of the, um, five or six of the countries where the, the, the COVID is, is uh, less, less uh, contagious are led by women, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, Taiwan, New Zealand, Finland, uh, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Germany, and Denmark. So this is a real fact, quite amazing. You know, the other day it's real, it's real, because I think right now this this kind of uh, way that the women have to uh, I don't know to to able to to manage the the the, the crisis. You know, I think it's it's quite strong, quite different quite emotional, is more, I don't know, I think it's, uh, this is something that put the focus that women can lead a lot of things, a lot of change, a lot of uh, ways to, to think. So it's opportunity to put put the women in, in the front of, of the of the, no? of the of the countries, of the communication, of the agency, of the, uh, the whatever we want. The world, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can do it. We have we have facts, you know? Yeah, they should so let us, it's, it's, really. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I mean, so the last question for you ladies is obviously, so how, given the focus, to, to Shane's point that at the moment everything is COVID, right, and you're seeing these kind of brand manifestos, we're with you hand in hand in these unprecedented times, and we know that a lot of the work that's going to be happening for the next six to 12 months will be either about the impact of COVID or the post COVID world. How do you think as an industry and as creative leaders, how are we going to make sure that gender equality still stays part of this conversation, that it doesn't get lost in this larger COVID issue? So, I mean, I, I think, I think, like I said before, I think that it starts with who's in the room. You know, I think that as far as we do have to continue with our gender equality work, but I do think that we have to stop looking at it as we're waiting for the brief. We're waiting for, no one's waiting for the COVID brief. We're, we're reacting to what's happening right now. You know, we're just, we, we are doing work that is of its time. So you have to look at when you get assignments, 
whether it's NFL, whether it's the Olympics, whether it's the Oscars, whether it's NASCAR, whatever it is, you have to look and find areas where you can inject more diversity and more female equality in areas that may not normally be. You know, I mean, there are not any women playing NFL, but we found someone that connected with many. You know, so I think it's finding, it's, it's always looking at those briefs um, and trying to find those areas where it feels very natural to have women representation. Um, I think that, you know, after COVID, I think that it, it shook people. Um, I think it's shaken, you know, even just the groups and teams that um, I work with. I've noticed, you know, we're all, uh, we're a much tighter team. We all work on teams. So everyone sees everybody's spouses and cats and dogs and, and kids and bedrooms and things like that. So I think it's brought us a lot closer and it's given everyone a little bit more empathy into everyone else's work life and home life. So I feel as though when people speak up in meetings and when people say certain things, you might have a better understanding as to where they're coming from because you could literally see what the other side of them is. You know, people, you know, people would hear me in a meeting and I would take my work self to work. But now everyone's met Colin, Cormac and Alder and my kids and my dog and all my whole life. So there might be a different way that people see me and maybe don't see me as you know who like Shane work Shane and they see me as mom Shane and wife Shane and messy Shane <laughs> and, and no makeup Shane and no hair dye Shane <laughs> so, you know I think that COVID has given us a window into everyone's lives a little bit and maybe it it opens up the conversations that we do have in in meeting rooms mm. I mean, that's really interesting because I think one of the things that, to Raquel's point earlier about female leadership, right, one of the things that's commonly associated with female leadership is empathy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's true. It's empathy. So I think that's really interesting. And so, I mean, Raquel, how do you see it? How's, how do you see the balance happening over the next 12 months? Yeah, I, th right. I think that right now is an opportunity. It, brands can talk about everything that post COVID is, is an example right now that the, the brands is in other role is not trying to sell in the product. So for this reason, I think that right now, every client uh, have an incredible opportunity to make a great equal gender initiative. And no matter if you are sell a magazine or men products or whatever you want. And we should be able to convince our clients that the moment is now. Mm. And the way to make it successfully I think, in my opinion, is that the initiative invites everyone to feel reflective or sensitive uh, what it, to, it posts. Because right now, the people are open to empath empathize with, with a lot of uh, them, uh, with, with everything. You know, you can talk right now to everything. So, I mean, I think when we make campaigns focusing on right now, is we need to do something that not point the, the, the focus on trying to to find an enemy or focus it in a gender war uh, because in this kind of examples that the goal is not achieved i think it's not so much about looking for guilty but fighting ideas that may produce or the barriers go without saying with with facts with inspiration with with good ideas with intelligence because right now the, the people are open to to listen a lot of kind of uh, very very interesting messages and it's an opportunity, you know, in terms to to talk about gender equality. Yeah, yeah. it's a new lens to bring to the challenge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, man, you've talked before around actually that there's another side to the to the kind of representations of gender and how people are doing their jobs. Yes, I, um, I mentioned it before that um, this COVID happening actually. Um, I guess the good side of it is that. People are seen, you know, whether you're, you're male or female, you're seen for your core competencies. I mean, for what you can do, for your talent and your skill, which I think is a great thing because, you know, um, gender bias doesn't have time or any space to, for it to rear its ugly head. 
Um, what I do like about, you know, in terms of pushing for that balance is what I do like is because um, here in the Philippines, for example, like the work from home situation, everyone is doing that. So in the Philippines, we're quite conservative as, you know, as a country. And sometimes like for a particular brand, say a motherly brand, they would usually, advertising usually depicts them as, you know, housewives. But with the reality now, I mean, it's, it's a big step, at least for us here in the Philippines, that we get now opportunities to show working moms. I mean, before we fall, I mean, women get portrayed falling into those stereotypes of being housewives or just, you know, being a homemaker. But what it's done right now is to show that, hey, there's m- much more to mothers or much more to women. And I think, you know, small steps, but I think that's a very important step that's happening right now. Thank you. So I think that, I just wanted to add one little thing to that. I, I completely, completely agree with you. I think that I know for, for my friends who may have taken different jobs mm. because it's been more flexible for their work life and mom life, mm. I feel as though they can now, if if this kind of balance kind of continues and right now the balance is way off because the kids are home so (laughs) but if this continues i think that you know these moms and these women um can take these risks to these more you know let's say marketable jobs or these other jobs that maybe they would have they put them on the back burner because they felt like they couldn't do both Mm -hmm. then as an industry you're going to get more women in these rooms and, and these decision maker women. That's the, I think that's a big difference. I think there's a lot of women in advertising that, you know, there are, but it's the decision makers. It's at the C-suite levels. That's where women start to drop off at a very big rate. And so, and that's the age that women start to have kids and families and you don't have the, the pickings are small. Um, and a lot of it has to be, a lot of it winds up being because women wind up making decisions in their career. But if there's a flexibility there, you might start to see more women pop up in these roles. And I think yeah. COVID has taught us that not only can we be working from home um, in, a, in a, you know, a very productive way, but women can handle a lot. I mean, you yeah. see it every five minutes. I'm surprised my kids haven't popped up in like, you know, hit me over the head with the stuffed mm-hmm. animal at this point. But it's like you see how sure. women can multitask and, and can handle all of this. So I do think that there is, I think a lot of people are surprised as to how, I'll say at least moms, because we're speaking about like gender, um, how how much they can balance and how good at it they actually are. Yes. So, I mean, I think to wrap up, I mean, essentially... Yeah, gender equality is an ongoing conversation, and I think we're going to see new lenses on it in our new normal. But I think that Shane's exactly right, which is the great brands and the great agencies and the great work will come when we're not looking for that brief and we're not waiting for that brief. And I think we embrace the things about the new normal that actually might be better, you know, that we need to look back at the old normal and go, okay, maybe these are the things we want to take forward and these are the things we don't. And uh, gender equality is a big part of that conversation. But also people with, people with, uh, you know, who live living with disabilities, you know, a a, a more flexible environment is going to lead to a more diverse workforce. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's ultimately accessibility and representation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, in, in, our, in our agencies and in the work that we do. Yep. All right. Well, that is all we have time for. So, ladies, take a bow. Thank you very much. Absolutely.